Hello everyone, my name is Khan of Negative White and my guest tonight is... Lindsay Schoolcraft and Cradle of Filth. Cradle of Filth just released their 11th album. Yes. It's the uh, fifth label and the first album with Nuclear Blast. Yeah. So how did it turn out? Better than expected, when we first went ahead with writing the album, we had the new lineup and two new guitarists. It was my first time on a Cradle of Filth album. Uh, Danny and our drummer Martin have been doing this for years together. We had a few switch-ups in the band, our two other guitarists left, so now we have the new ones. And we were, we were nervous, but we just had fun and did the best we could and really put our minds together and created something great. And Nuclear Blast took us on and we, we released it and the response has been overwhelming. We're so happy people are really liking it. Yeah, it's called um, Hem of the Witches and it's based on the Melus Maleficarum, which is a German book, which was controversial already back then, right? Yes. Yeah, I was on how to persecute and kill witches, um, which is pretty messed up. It was, I think, just an overthrow of trying to get rid of uh, paganism as Christianity was coming in. And uh, that's what I believe. I could be wrong. So that's what I've been told. And uh, we just kind of wanted to give the witches their revenge on this album. And there's, if you look pretty closely in the lyrics, there's a few stories here and there that are pretty dark. Like, for example, Black is Magic is about a man that misses his, his love and she's dead and he um, consults some, some of the occult and magical powers that be and um, she tries to bring her back to life. My understanding of the song is that she keeps rising to the ice and she, I think she died in a lake. She keeps rising to the ice and she keeps dying. So like it's just like a never ending curse. Like he wants to bring her back but he's actually hurting her more than anything. It's, it's really dark. There's a lot more stories if you listen to the lyrics in the album. It's pretty intense. <laughs> P parents were like, oh no, my children are listening to Cradle of Filth. Uh, <laughs> they're going to convert to paganism. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, um, they have that concern. A lot of parents have that concern. I've had some parents write me and they were just like, immediately think, uh, same thing happened to our guitarist Richard Shaw, but they immediately think like we're Satanists and we worship <laughs> Satan and we're having all these weird rituals and it's like, well, no, actually we're pretty normal people. Our guitarist is a, a um, music teacher and I mean, I'm like, you know, I'm First Nation Native American and we all have our own opinions and ideas on how we live life and we're all pretty nice, sweet, kind people. So um, yeah, it is controversial, like our art, it's, it's the separation of the people in the band versus the art and it's just our art form. We like to kind of um, dabble in that realm, if you know what I mean. Um, it's just where we like to express ourselves. Yeah, because it's not um, just about the music, it's, it's all about the image, right? Yes. Yeah, we're, we, we're very uh, heavily image-based band, and we put a lot of thought into it. Uh, we all kind of gather our ideas. I, I've helped sketch out makeup in the past. I design all my own dresses and clothes. So does Danny. We try to complement each other, but be different. Um, yeah, so that's a big part of it. And it's, it's so much, I think it's so much more fun to do things in in the dark, kind of in a darker realm. I mean, if we were to do things lighter, yeah, we could do it. I mean, who knows, maybe we'll do something in a lighter realm, but still make it dark, you know. So how many stage outfits do you have? I've had quite a few since <laughs> I've joined the band. I'd say about 10. I, I have one that was made um, recently by Plastic Wrap. Um, she's based out of Canada. It's like a cyberpunk, punk, goth, uh, pagan kind of thing. And she designed my dress for me. Um, she's amazing. And um, Danny, he works on his own stuff. His, he, his wife, Tony, helps him design his outfits. And then Hysteria Machine has made our beautiful headdresses that we wear on stage. Danny has a set of horns, and I have this beautiful cathedral crown. So, um, yeah, I have quite a few, and there's going to be tons more in the future. It's just we like to change it up as much as possible. So. So how much work goes into one outfit? Is it like 20 hours, 40 hours? Oh gosh, months. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably if you accumulate it, yeah, it could take yeah, anywhere from 20 to 40 hours. But we, we, start, we try to plan as far in advance as possible. I mean, I'm already getting my next dress made currently for North America as well as my next headdress. Oh. So we plan really far in advance. But that's part of it. You have to. And it's fun. We love it. Like We always have these crazy ideas. We just visualize them and then we make them come to life and that's like that's what the other part of the other side of making the music is it's part of the whole package but it's the, the, the image there's the image and then there's the, the music so it's, it's a lot of fun long process though <laughs> <laughs> yeah another visual element is the album cover which is I think it's a kind of great <laughs> who did you work with it on uh, for the album cover um, is a Latvian artist named uh, Arthur he actually contacted the band a few years ago 
um, and gave us a CD. I was in, at the, ba in the band at that point. But then uh, recently we were humming and hawing at, oh, who should we get to do the album artwork? Some people had come forward, but we just didn't feel it was moving in the, the direction we wanted for the music and our image. And then our drummer, Martin, um, spoke out and said, listen, this guy contacted, contacted us years ago. I think he's perfect. This is postmodernism, and it's very much... Um, it's got like a dark church painting mural feel and I think it's exactly what we need and we checked him out and that we were like that's it this is the person this person for the job and when he started sending over the first pieces of artwork we were just blown away we we're like yes this is our guy for sure yeah and it's but it's very explicit right yeah it's pretty dark and, and creepy um and some of it's beautiful the one with the three um nymphs and one of them is wearing horns and they have like a little ermine and some of it's gorgeous and then and some of it is very pretty gruesome and dark. I was shocked that some of them made it to the t-shirts, but I'm like, oh, we're Cradle of Filth, of course it's going to make it to the t-shirts. <laughs> Joined the band, I think, in 2013? Yes. With all the, yeah, with all the lineup changes and uh, label changes, how do you manage to keep the vision, the spirit going? Um, especially like for Danny, it's Cradle Filth is his life, it's his baby, it's his other baby. He has his daughter Luna, who he loves very much, then Cradle Filth is the other baby. Um, and he's always inspired, he's always thinking the guy can't turn off his brain, which is not necessarily a bad thing, um, can be a bad thing if he can't sleep at night. But um, we just, uh, with, the, with the current lineup, we're all so hungry to, to prove something and to make something happen. This is a big opportunity for us. and. We wanted to make Danny happy, but we wanted to make the fans happy, and we wanted to keep the future of the band alive. So um, I think that was part of it. And we are still writing. We had some songs left over from the last album, and we have our writing partners situated within the band. Like currently, I'm writing with Richard Shaw on a song, and uh, our bassist, Dan Firth, he kind of gets lost in his own head. He's been writing his own stuff, which is great. I. I think they're all just such talented songwriters. We all have our different process on how we write songs. I'm more of the type I, I just kind of compliment what comes my way. And then our drummer, Martin, helps me finish my ideas. He's very talented. He knows how to finish up the choirs and the strings and anything extra. Um, I'm still learning how to write in all the weird key changes because we're so progressive. So Martin helps me smooth over those problems when, uh, when we hit the studio. But he has taught me a lot. The first album we did together, Martin taught me so much so um, yeah we, we just we, we never really stop I mean we're all very creative people and we just love to create and it's it's we're all like sharing a brain in this current lineup and that's kind of how I, I feel we we've, we've been going this time around I, I can't speak for the past because I've only been in the band for three years now almost three years so um, I think it shows I mean the sound it's um, some pe people you say yeah it's symphonic black metal some say yeah it's gothic metal Uh, but I think at the base it's just heavy metal, right? Yeah, it's for us it's just extreme heavy metal, um, but we do have elements of symphonic and gothic and a little bit of progressive to the prog, you know. <laughs> so we're, we're kind of, we incorporate a lot of everything, even in some parts you could say it's very classical. So, yeah, we, it's, it's, uh, it's all over the map, but on this album what we wanted to do is we just wanted to take inspiration from our favorite eras of Cradle of Filth and revamp it in the current day, and I know some people don't think that's possible because we're not the members from back then but it totally was possible we just wanted to write really good music that that's that was our goal so so who's bringing which influence i mean what's your musical background for example well for me um i i come from a different realm uh, i started off playing punk music but when i was really young my dad got me into classic rock and country so um there's it's a strange beginning it's where i learned how to sing and play guitar my punk band i played bass Uh, and then in my early 20s, I formed like a more alternative goth rock band. But that's when I started learning classical piano. Uh, I've been, I did eight years of opera training. I really want to go back. I'm just always touring. So I always, it, and as you get older, it's kind of like a fine wine. Your voice gets better as you get older for women opera singers. Um, so a lot of classical influence, but I, I love a lot of um, symphonic metal that's coming out of Europe. I'm hugely into trip hop, which is a little different. I like anything with the live string section. I'm a big fan of Bjork. Evanescence is my favorite band. So that's that's where I kind of come from. I, kinda... I love Bjork. <laughs> Me too. I love her. She's like, oh, she's my spirit animal. She's amazing. Like I, anything she does, I'm just like, wow. She she does not care what anybody thinks, and that's like that's so pure and true to art form. So. Yeah, but it's like the only thing she hasn't done, I think, is metal. Actually, so. 
Actually, I've seen um, uh, with Skunk and Nazi, she did like kind of a really heavy version of Army of Me. Oh, yeah. It was pretty darn close. <laughs> I won't lie. That, that's as close as I think I've seen Bjorka to metal, but she'd be a great metal artist if she wanted to be. She could be anything if she wanted to be. Oh, well, actually, I think she started in a punk band as well, right? Uh, her first band, Sh- Sugar yeah, Cubes? Sugar Cubes, yeah, yeah, she did, and uh, it was pretty cool. I checked it out. I mean, I didn't understand the language they were singing <laughs> in, but it was neat, very, very cool, so. Yeah, I think Icelandic is one of the hardest languages on earth to learn if you haven't grown up there, so. Yeah, that No Finnish, chance. <laughs> the Finnish language is really difficult, too, apparently, so. I don't know. They're both from the same area, so. Oh yeah, you mentioned symphonic metal. I think I've seen you at um, Female Metal Voices Fest. Yes, yeah. So a few times. So what do you think about the set festival? Oh, I love the festival. It's like a big family gathering. I have so many friends and um, acquaintances there that I just love to see. And I'm sad I missed it last year. There was nothing that went on this year, but I think they're planning to do it again for 2016. Um, I, it was, it's fantastic. I don't feel that um, you know women in metal really need the the liberation or to fight for equality anymore. I think it is just what it is now. Flora Jensen has addressed this, but the label Female Fronted Metal, it was something that was needed a few years ago to give um, women in metal that boost. But I feel now that, you know, even though we're, it, it was a boys club for the longest time, there's so many women in metal now, I don't really think it needs to be kind of um, categorized that way because sometimes people will see a band with a female singer and they'll just pigeonhole it into that category and it's like no they can be something like completely different I mean like Flora said she's this uh, brilliantly trained classical singer who does so many genres and then you have Elisa who is also an excellent singer but a growler and it's like the Arch Enemy and Nightwish are two completely different genres and styles and everything and it's like to just both categorize them as female fronted is kind of silly. Yeah, but uh, I think they're touring together this December with Amorphis, so I think it's a pretty cool tour package. Yeah, yeah, they are. I, they invited me out to one of the oh. shows, and I was like, I don't know if I can make you guys, but <laughs> hopefully I can. We'll see. It just depends on how things go over Christmas. We'll see. So a show in Europe or in USA? Oh, in Europe. It, w- it was, um, I think, one of their final ones. It, like December 19th, they were inviting me out, and Rich was saying, oh, come hang out with me. And now Danny's saying, oh, just come spend Christmas with me and my family. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's like my family's going to kill me, so who knows. <laughs> I might see them. It, it's a really strong lineup, really cool tour. They're out right now, so I just keep missing them. We keep missing each other on dates. So. <laughs> How's working with Nuclear Blast so far? Um, they've been amazing. They are so on top of things. Um, they've really helped us uh, like push the new album. They, uh, they're they really nice people. They came and hung out with us last night at the show in uh, London, yeah. uh, the, the UK office, and they're just such fun people. They're so passionate about what they do. Um, they, they're just there because they, they really truly love music, but they also like doing the, the behind the scenes work. And um, that's important. You need, you need a label like that. You don't want to be with people who are just all in it for the money and the gain. Because let's be honest, in this industry, that's not, it's not like that anymore. Uh, so I've had a great time working with them. Danny's very pleased with them, and we really appreciate them. So it's been a good working relationship so far. So what do they expect from you except like meeting the deadlines? Are there any expectations from their side? Lots and lots of interviews, but that's okay. I, I enjoy doing interviews. Um, yeah, and just being up on our social media um, in heavy metal, yeah, you're going to have to do it completely online and being in touch with your fan base. If you're a pop star like The Weeknd or Lana Del Rey, there comes a point where you're just so big, it doesn't really matter anymore. And I mean, I think that's kind of, uh, in some ways, some people's goals, the hopeful goal. but. Um, yeah, I mean, I like it. I love being in touch with uh, our fans and my fans for my solo project, Schoolcraft. You know, there's a few here. I call them Schoolcraftians and Filthlings because some are like me for Cradle Filth, some like me for the solo or both. And uh, I love being in touch with them. I love talking to them. I'm kind of like a big sister. Some people write me in and need some support and advice, and I'm always there for them. And I've met some incredibly talented people who I've had the chance to work with, whether they're photographers or uh, makeup artists or visual artists. Um, it's so important. If, if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't have my nice stage clothing, and I wouldn't you know, be able to, to, to talk to my fans the way I do. There's, it's different when you can write someone in private versus a conversation face-to-face, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, shout-outs to Tim Tronkel <laughs> at oh, this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, hi, Tim. Yeah, oh, I miss him so much. He's an amazing photographer. I actually met him through the uh, Metal Female Voices Festival, so he's, he's just lovely. So I hope, I hope to see him soon. I don't know if I will, but... <laughs> 
any final words from you? Um, just uh, thank you to everyone who's got a copy of Hammer of the Witches and who's been coming out to the shows. We appreciate you guys and we love having you around and the support means so much. So thank you very much. And thank you for the interview. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>